the entrance antiphon. You are just, O Lord, and your judgment is right. Treat your servant in accord with your merciful love. Good morning. Today's Mass intentions are for Hugh Farrell. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace, Lord of Heavens. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary, Christ our Lord. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh in the splendor of the Father, Lord of Heavens. And mighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, by whom we are redeemed and receive adoption. Look graciously upon your beloved sons and daughters, that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. <coughs> A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, how can any one of you with a case against another dare to bring it to the unjust for judgment instead of to the holy ones? Do you not know that the holy ones will judge the world? If the world is to be judged by you, are you unqualified for the lowest law courts? Do you not do you not know that we will judge angels? Then why not everyday matters? If, therefore, you have courts for everyday matters, do you see as judges people of no standing in the church? I say this to shame you. Can it be that there is not one among you wise enough to be able to settle a case between brothers, but rather brothers but rather brother goes to court against brother and that before unbelievers. Now indeed then it is in any case a failure on your part that you have lawsuits against one another. Why not rather put up with injustice? Why not rather let yourself be cheated? Instead you inflict injustice and cheat and this to brothers. Do you not know that the unjust will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor boy prostitutes, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor slanderers, nor robbers will inherit the kingdom of God. That is what some of you used to be. But now you've had, you have had yourself washed and you were sanctified. You were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and in the spirit of our God. The word of the Lord. Responsorial song. The Lord takes delight in his people. Sing to the Lord a new song of praise in the assembly of the faithful. Let Israel be glad in their maker. Let the children of Zion rejoice in their king. Let them praise his name in the festive dance. Let them sing praise to him with tremble and harp. For the Lord loves his people, and he adores the lowly with victory. Let the faithful exalt in glory. Let them sing for joy upon their couches. Let the high praise of God be in their throats. This is the glory of all his faithful. Alleluia. Alleluia. 
I chose you from the world, that you may go and bear fruit that will last, says the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus departed to the mountain to pray. And he spent the night in prayer to God. When day came, he called his disciples to himself, and from them he chose twelve, whom he also named apostles. Simon, whom he named Peter and his brother Andrew, James, John, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James the son of Alphaeus, Simon, who was called the Zealot, and Judas the son of James and Judas Iscariot, who became a traitor. And he came down with them and stood on a stretch of level ground. A great crowd of his disciples and a large number of people from all Judea and Jerusalem and the coastal region of Tyre and Sidon came to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. Even those who were tormented by unclean spirits were cured. Everyone in the crowd sought to touch him, because power came forth from him and healed them all. The Gospel of the Lord. So we've been going through this first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, in which St. Paul is uh, teaching and admonishing this Corinthian community. He's recognizing their sin and calling them out in their sin and he seems to lay it on heavy today he says you inflict injustice and treat even your brothers even your own friends he says don't be deceived the unjust will not inherit the kingdom then he goes on to list all these unjust sins fornicators idolaters adulterers prostitutes sodomites thieves greedy drunkards slanderers robbers and he seems to throw a final punch. He says, this is what some of you used to be. It really hits home to them. But he doesn't stop there. Being filled with the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Christ, he goes on to give them the good news. He says, but you have had yourselves washed. You were sanctified. You were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and in the Spirit of God. He preaches the good news of our faith to them, that no matter where they've been, what they've done, they've come to know Christ, who has washed them of their sins, who has sanctified them, who has justified them and us with God our Father. The Lord took delight so much in his people that he sent us his only son, his son who we read about in today's gospel, who went to the mountain on the heights to pray to God the Father before he chose the twelve. When he chooses them, we read, he came down with them and stood on a stretch of level ground. He didn't appoint them and say, go, I'm going to go over here on the high mountain and stay and pray. He went among them. He worked, he healed, he, he taught among them. Pope Francis sometimes calls the church a field hospital. And the idea of a field hospital is in the armed forces is they need everything, they, they, they have to have everything together to contain themselves. They don't want to rely on any outside forces when they go into a country, a war zone. So they set up their own field hospital. And in that field hospital are soldiers, uh, the same soldiers that fight, they're also medics. The same soldiers that are healed, they're strengthened to heal others. So this is the idea of the field hospital for the church. The church is our field hospital. We, not only the building, but the body of Christ. We come to it to be healed by Christ, to preach that good news, to ourselves be strengthened by the sacraments, to go forth into the world, the, the battle zone of the world, to strengthen others, to bring the good news of Christ, the good news that our Lord is delighted in his people. 
so that we may be uh, the hands and feet of God, the field medics, so to speak, in our families, in our homes, in our workplaces, so that we may preach this good news that Jesus came among us to heal us, to save us, to wash us clean. So as we're strengthened by this Eucharistic celebration, we remember that yes, we are healed, we are strengthened, but we go forth to bring this strength, this love to the world. Gathered together as the body of Christ, we offer the following prayers and petitions. For our Holy Father and all bishops, priests, and deacons, may the Lord continue to bless them in their leadership of the faithful. Let us pray to the Lord. For government officials, may God give them wisdom in building unity among the beautiful diversity of cultures and perspectives in our world. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who feel alienated, lonely, or cast aside, may the Holy Spirit console them with the knowledge that all belong to the family of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. For our peace in our world, for the men and women of the armed forces, wherever they serve our nation, and for the safety of all first responders who serve our communities, let us pray to the Lord. For an increase in vocations through the priesthood, religious life, and permanent diaconate in our archdiocese, let us pray to the Lord. Amen. For our protection from storms during hurricane season, through the intercession of Our Lady of Prompt Succor, let us pray to the Lord. Amen. Let us now pause to add our own intentions in silence. Let us pray to the Lord. Amen. Lord God, we thank you for the gift of your beloved Son, our salvation and our strength. We ask that you hear and answer our prayers according to your love, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. <coughs> Blessed be for God of all creation, for to your goodness we have received for every hour. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Thus may you look on all creation. To your goodness, we have received the blind we have through the divine and work of human hands, will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God and the Almighty Father. O God, who give us the gift of true prayer and of peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty, and by partaking of the sacred mystery, we may be faithfully united in mind and through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Holy Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself, that a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity, made the body of Christ in the temple of the Holy Spirit, might, to the praise of your manifold wisdom, be manifest as the Church. And so, 
in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you as we enjoy and we proclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, have you heard of the Lord of glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes to the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the Father of all holiness. May holy therefore his gifts be praised by sending down your spirit upon the life of people so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and after willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mystery of faith, we proclaim Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. Give me thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that for the partaking of the body and blood of Christ. We may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Gregory, our Bishop, Cherie, his assisting bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you, your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him, and in O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and born by the divine teaching, we dare to say, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. 
Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called for the supper of the Lamb. Communion and upon. Like the deer that yearns for running streams, so my soul is yearning for you, my God. My soul is thirsting for God, the living God.